My perspective on this issue is that of a marine ecologist who studies coral reefs. We were invited to come to the island of Vieques off the eastern end of Puerto Rico by the Puerto Rican government to examine coral reefs there. Coral reefs are extraordinary environments. First of all, they are the most diverse environments on Earth with 32 different phyla. In addition, they are the most complex of all marine environments with a reliance on the symbiotic relationship between plants and animals. They are the most productive of all marine communities with 2,000 dry grams carbon per meter squared per year. And they are the oldest of all marine communities with 400,000 years of continuous evolutionary development. It is absolutely imperative for everyone in this room to understand that the natural world has value. Whether that value is to you personally, to the nation state which you come from, to a tourist industry on which it is dependent, or on fisheries and medical health, the value is there. We talk so much in this room about the effects on human beings. We are but one part of a world which is so interdependent and so closely linked that if we deny it or ignore it, we wind up in situations like rising sea level and one-third of all the deaths in Beijing due to poor air quality. The first thing we had to do was to enumerate the different kinds of military hardware that we saw there and also dispensed munitions and other kinds of things. Here's a 2,000 pound bomb, Mark 84 general purpose bomb, next to a dispensed munition canister. We also surveyed the area for the presence of other military uh, disposal items. We found uh, barges that had been sunk with barrels such as you see here, as well as compressed gas cylinders of unknown content. What I'm going to show you now are the explosive compound concentrations from different parts. The first thing that we will look at is the fact that if the bar is red, it means that the concentration of this material exceeds EPA's risk-based concentration for carcinogenic material. So first let's look at the water and what we find is that with regards to the first of six compounds, hexahydro-135, trinitro-135, triazinine, it's carcinogenic. With regards to the next compound, 135 trinitrobenzene, carcinogenic. 13 dinitrobenzene, carcinogenic. 246 trinitrotoluene, TNT, carcinogenic. 70,000 of these PPBs, parts per billion. 24 dinitrotoluene, 246 dinitrotoluene. Again, carcinogenic, and 2-nitrotoluene, carcinogenic. The water in and around and in close, pro close proximity to the leaking bombs is hazardous. It is toxic material. Now let's look at corals, which were in physical proximity to these kinds of ordinances. Again, for four, all four compounds tested, carcinogenic, 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 carcinogenic. If you're looking for an ecosystem effect of leaking ordinances, here it is. You see it in the physical structure of the coral. You see it in its inability to photosynthesize and to feed. You see it in its color. And you see it in the compounds that are contained in the tissue next, in, next to the bomb. On May 1, 2003, the Navy left Vieques. And in January of 2005, the Environmental Protection Agency declared Vieques a Superfund site. We certainly approve of that designation for the following reasons. First, UXO litters the eastern end of Vieques, Puerto Rico. Certainly one of the new things that we must do is to find out what the concentration of those bombs are, but that has not been done yet. Second, at least six nitrosamine compounds are leaking from this material onto the coral reef. Three, all six of these compounds are well-known carcinogens, and both the water and wildlife have elevated levels of these carcinogens at concentrations well above EPA's risk-based cancer assessment limits. And finally, concentration of these compounds decay exponentially with distance from the source. 
And I remind you again for number six that point sources of pollution can be removed. And when Jim Barton gives his presentation later in this conference, you're going to see that rather than just waving our arms and worrying about a problem, we actually have a solution. I leave you with the following thought. Methods of warfare likely to cause environmental damage are strictly forbidden. That is from the Geneva Convention. Thank you for listening.